Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and I've got wood again. It's funny to make the same jokes repeatedly. Anyway, it's time for more model railway adventures. Today, I'm going to build some ends for my base boards so they can be stored and transported. I will also be joining the boards together, so stick around for that. As you can sort of see, I've got some more plywood, and I've cut myself some more lengths of the pine as well. Last time, there were some commenters saying that I wasn't using a tenon saw. One a bit more civil than the others, but it is in fact a tenon saw, not a mitre saw. Though I do believe they're more or less the same sort of thing. I'm waffling and off topic already. Good job, Herbert. Making these end pieces is simple. I don't really need or want anything too fancy. The plywood is the same 7mm stuff that I used on the tops of the baseboards, only it's 600mm by 897. Or rather, that's what it's sold as. That's not what it actually is, but the important thing is that it's the same width as the baseboards. I marked, fairly roughly, where I want those pieces of pine to go on the plywood. I wanted them about 25mm in from the edge, so that the outer edges of the frame wouldn't interfere with the bolts that will come later. I did make countersink holes for the screws here, which are the same as I previously screwed the plywood to the frames with. And then, unsurprisingly, I drive those in. I didn't bother drilling pilot holes for these, it probably isn't super necessary. And that's the vertical, I guess you would call them bracings, in place. It's probably not totally necessary, but I added another bit that will sit horizontally. I figured this might give a bit more strength, but it'll mostly act as a handle. This time, in addition to countersinking, I drilled pilot holes, and used the same black screws I did the frame with. You can see I'd positioned it to check the depth, because I didn't want it to go all the way through. Fortunately, it didn't, so I didn't have to go back to the hardware. Yet. It is a bit rough, but this doesn't really need to be neat. Not unless you're doing this and you want yours to be neat. I'm fine with this. I quickly had two of these end pieces together, and they sit nicely against the ends of the boards like so. It's not totally complete though. The plywood is 600mm tall, and I didn't really want it to be that tall. It's only 100mm, but the smaller it is, the easier it is to store. What I did was measure 60mm in from the top, and then used a jigsaw to, not very neatly, cut a 60mm strip. And then I cut the end part down to the 500mm-ish height that I wanted. Again, it's pretty messy and not perfect, but it doesn't really matter, and I'm fine with it being a bit messy, as long as it works. The reason I wanted the 60mm strips is to create a sort of buffer that will sit between the baseboard and the end plate, so I've screwed that into place nice and easy. It probably would have been a good idea to put some glue here, but I didn't. The purpose of this, if it's not obvious, is to provide a space between the end of the baseboard and the end plate where the tracks will be. I figure if the end part is flush with the baseboard, there would be a risk of damaging the tracks, and nobody wants that. Now, to join it all together. I position one baseboard and one end plate on their sides. They should, more or less, stay that way by themselves, so it is a bit easier to work on them this way, but to make sure they stay where I want them, I clamp them into position. Here's what I figured would be a good option for joining it all together. M8 bolts and wing nuts. The idea being that I wouldn't need any tools to put this together and take it apart. I do wish there was a bolt with the wing thing, but this was the best I could find in this size. Also, pro tip, if you are buying washers, you should probably buy enough for the project you're doing so that you don't have to drive over to the hardware at the most annoying time of the day, school pickup time. I mean, that would be horrible. Who would let that happen? Hmm, anyway. The assembly is as simple as you might imagine. I drill a hole in each corner using an appropriately sized bit, then I insert the bolt, and I'm using washers here to distribute the pressure and hopefully prevent wear on the wood. Then I tighten it all up. Easy. I guess if you wanted to, putting two bolts in each corner would give it a bit more strength and maybe even more resistant to flexing and moving. I didn't feel that was necessary, but I suppose I could always add more later if I feel a need. You can see there's plenty of space between the end of the baseboard and the end plate here, where the tracks will go. There isn't actually a lot of movement when I move the assembled thing, but you never know. It's probably kind of obvious to state, but it's a good idea to mark the ends of the baseboards and end parts, just to make it easy to see which pieces should go together. 
Unless you're remarkably precise, unlike myself, the holes for the bolts won't be interchangeable, so you'll have to put it together the same way every time. It's definitely not the neatest thing in the world, in fact one of the washers sticks out beyond the plywood frame, but it is okay. It functions exactly how I want it to. I move inside where it's significantly less sunny, and I set up the boards against each other. They're not perfectly flush as I, some might say, unreasonably hoped they would be, but they're not too bad. I turn the boards over, and here's my very helpful assistant. Very, very helpful, and not at all in the way. I'm doing this on the floor because it's the largest and flattest surface I had available, and I should imagine it's obvious why that's helpful. I've clamped the baseboards together and had my assistant inspect them. It seems to have passed inspection. To make sure things are lined up nicely, I'll be using a set of alignment dowels from DCC Concepts. And I've obviously bought the set with the spade bits included, but you can get it without them. I'm sure there's other options for this kind of thing, but this was convenient. At this point, I'm only drilling the pilot holes for them, and I'm being very careful to drill these holes as straight and neatly as I can. I imagine I could probably just try again if I messed up too badly, but I really only want to do this once. I figured it was probably a good idea to connect the baseboards at this point, and here's what I'm using for that. M6 bolts. And this time, both ends have the wing nut thing. How these bolts are installed is probably rather obvious, so it seems rather unlikely that you need me to explain in painstaking detail. I didn't bother measuring the positioning of the holes I'm drilling here, though I did use the washer as a kind of guide to make sure that I'm not trying to place two bolts too close to each other, or where the alignment dowels will go. I used two bolts on either side, which I figure is probably enough. I also put a fifth one in the center, though it's probably not needed, and it'll be kind of difficult to access when the boards are sitting on the table I intend to hold them with. It's there anyway if I want it. There were five nuts to go with the six bolts for whatever reason, so I figured I might as well use up all of these nuts. Oh, we've never heard that one before! <laughs> anyway, the boards went together well enough, and they even stayed together when I picked the whole thing up and put it on the table. Also, the gap seems to be a bit smaller now that everything's bolted together, and I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? Here we can see the array of holes I've drilled. The biggest one is for the end plates, there are two 6mm holes for the connecting bolts, there's a third one to act as a pilot hole so I could make an opening to pass wires through later on. I figure that's kind of future proofing. The small one is the pilot hole for the alignment dowels, and why not install those now? I think these are pretty cool, and they seem to be quite precise. Installing them isn't too hard, though definitely be careful and patient. Using the pilot hole I just drilled, I take the larger of the two spade bits and start making a hole, but not all the way through the wood. You don't want this to be too deep at all. To check that you've got the right depth, take the socket end, I guess you would call it, and put it in the hole. If the outer flat part protrudes from the wood, the hole isn't deep enough. This will take a little bit of time, but it's not difficult at all. I've also used the large spade bit to, very roughly, tear another hole through the wood. I figure this one might just be useful for passing wires through at some point in the future. Back to the dowel hole. When I've got the right depth, I use the smaller spade bit to make a hole for the dowel bit. I don't know the technical terms for this stuff. Yeah, that's obvious! Once there's a hole for each dowel piece, I figured it was probably a good idea to test fit the whole thing before I glue them in. I don't think it really matters how you install these, you could have a pin and socket on each board, or both pins on one board like I've done, whichever you like best. They seem to go together nicely, and I will admit, I was kind of surprised I didn't find a way to mess this up, so I glue them in. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue here, but I'm sure there's many other suitable glues you could use too. I just put a bunch of it on the rib things on the back of the dowels, and then I stick them in the holes. Obviously using this much glue some of it is probably going to squish out. You can just wipe that up with a paper towel or whatever else you might like to wipe up glue with. I'm not here to judge. And that's about it. I did test fit everything after I'd let the glue set and it did go together, I just either forgot to press the record button or have lost the video. I did have to modify one of my end plate things, obviously it wasn't going to fit properly with the pin of the dowels sticking out of the end of the baseboard. 
I just hacked out a couple of squares for them. It's rough, but it works. Then I bolted the whole thing back together into storage mode, and it still goes together just how I want it. It is a bit awkward to manoeuvre, so maybe I'll put some wheels on one of the ends or something, but that's something for future Herbert to worry about. I'm quite happy with my progress. It's not exciting like laying track, but it is still progress, and it does need to be done, otherwise there'll be no track laying at all. I'm going to have to come up with something to cover the sides eventually, if only to protect from dust, but that's yet another thing for future Herbert to worry about. I don't plan on having an especially mountainous model railway, but I do want hills at either end, and I think the space I've got here should allow for some reasonable hills. The total height is 500mm, and the baseboards themselves take up about 140mm of space, so I could build up to around 180mm on either baseboard. It would probably have to be a bit less just to be safe, but in end scale that's still a pretty decent hill, enough for a tunnel anyway. Next up, I'll be marking out some lines and putting down some roadbed, which I'm kind of excited about, so stick around for that, it'll probably be pretty soon. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, that's where they go. If you've not already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the low low price of absolutely nothing. Or if you have the means and you want to help a Herbert Herbert do Herbert Herbert things, like being able to buy track and not starving to death, as well as seeing my videos a little bit early, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.